I absolutely love decorating with little Easter bunnies for springtime, but I thought for another little spin, let's create some bunny bait to lure those little rabbits away from my vegetable garden out back. So I'm gonna be sharing a few different options for making fabric carrots of your own. If you don't own a sewing machine, this tutorial is for you. I do have a little bit of hand sewing involved at one point, but I'll even give you an option as an alternative for that. So stick around and let's go ahead and dive in. I decided to use a few different fabric patterns for my fabric carrots. This is a little orange and yellow check fabric, and I'm just folding the right sides together and then placing this pattern that I will offer for free if you wanna check it out down in the description box below. So I'm tracing this with an invisible ink marker. You can go ahead and cut if you wanna skip this step, but I like to have it outlined just in case my fabric moves around on me. Now we can open up our carrot and you can see I had folded the pattern in half as well. There's a fold line indicated and a little dotted line that will show where we're gonna place the glue. I'm using this fabric glue that has a permanent bond. I really love this stuff and it's so easy to use. You have to wait maybe about 30 minutes for it to dry, but it's a nice little hack if you have a sewing project and just don't feel like getting the sewing machine out. I'm making a little trio of carrots. So I have patterns in two different sizes so I can make one slightly larger than the other. I'm repeating the same step, applying the glue on the right side of the fabric and then folding the edges together. Then it's just a matter of waiting a few minutes for it to dry. Once your carrots are dry, it's time to stuff them, but first I like to trim off just a little bit of that point so that it won't be so bulky on the bottom. Just make sure not to cut past where your glue is. Then we're gonna turn it out, and if you have a turning tool, that comes in handy. If not, you can use whatever pokey, pointy object you have around. Here I'm using a wooden dowel just to poke that tip all the way through. I'm using a polyester fill here. You can use cotton or whatever you like. I will link all of these supplies down below as always, so check the description box if you have any questions. And I'm just starting by filling in with little pieces of this polyfill until I get to maybe half an inch from the top. After making a few of these, I found that folding the edges of the top down just a little bit is gonna make for a prettier finish. I'm going to take a needle and thread just to make a simple running stitch to gather the top of the carrot. Now I know what you're thinking, Chrissy, you said this was a no sew option and here you are with a needle and thread, this looks like sewing. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you another alternative. If you don't wanna use a needle and thread, you can also glue your carrot closed. Now I'm gonna walk through some of the pros and cons of that and I'm gonna demonstrate what that looks like. So back to our running stitch, it really only takes a couple of minutes to run your needle in and out around the edge of the carrot. I'm not being super precise here. I'm doing a very long stitch. So just a few in and out until you go all the way around the carrot. And once you gather it, it's going to look a little bit like this. You do wanna leave that opening at the top so that we can stick in some greenery. I found these faux rosemary stems at my local craft store and I thought they would be perfect for my little carrot tops. I cut off the individual stems and then was able to insert them into the top of my carrots. Since I had some thread left over, I decided to use it just to weave in some of those stems of the faux greenery. You can also use a hot glue gun if you wanna secure it that way. It's a little bit easier than trying to stitch that greenery in place. I do recommend always using Gorilla Glue Sticks because they're just a little bit stronger. I think these are turning out super cute. I decided to make actually a trio of carrots and we're gonna embellish these one more way in just a moment, but I did promise you a no sew option. So here's what that looks like. I took my glue gun with that Gorilla Glue in it and I sealed the edge using the glue gun instead of fabric glue. This is a little tricky sometimes because it's hot, obviously, to work with, and you have to do it in sections because if you do one long line of glue, it may start drying on you before you have a chance to press it closed. So I just worked in sections trying to make sure I didn't leave any holes and then used my handy dandy silicone fingertips so I wouldn't burn myself while I did this. 
The good thing about this method is you don't have to wait for the glue to dry. It dries in seconds, so you'll turn it out the same way we did before, fill it with polyfill until it's all the way filled, and then we'll get to sealing the top closed. This part was a little trickier with the glue gun because it's really hard to press such a small amount of fabric closed with your fingers. I had to bring back those silicone fingertips so I wouldn't burn myself while I was trying to do this. Since I'm doing another variation on the carrots, I thought I'd show you what it looks like with ribbon. This is a good replacement if you don't have faux greenery or you just want a different vibe for your fabric carrots. So I'm just taking this pretty green ribbon that I found at the craft store and making a few loops to put as my carrot top. Once I have my loops done, I can use a little bit of this chenille stem or pipe cleaner, however you like to call it, and I'm just wrapping it around so that I have a nice little bouquet of ribbon to work with. My first attempt at sealing this carrot with glue was really literally a hot mess. So I gave it another shot and this time I just folded or pinched the top of the carrot together, inserted my ribbon in the middle, and then decided to just glue each piece or each side of the carrot together with hot glue one at a time and then just kind of cinch the top together. So you can see here, first I did the right side, held it together, gotta use those silicone fingertips again because this gets really hot to work with. Then I did the other side the same way and it's gonna look a little bit flattened, but then you can pull up each side and kind of glue it together again. It's not ideal as I said before, but it's just a quick and dirty option if you just need some fabric carrots in a hurry. Of course, you can also use a piece of twine to disguise some of the messiness of this method. I think it actually adds a little cute farmhouse touch and this carrot looks pretty good too. Now I said I wanted to make some bunny bait, so I thought it would be fun to create this cute little tag. I used my tag maker and some scrapbook paper to make this. I like that it has these little silver grommets, I think that's what they're called, and it just gives it sort of a professional look. So I love using this for tags. But to give this a more vintage vibe, I used Distress Ink and these little brushes. And this is a recent purchase. I am really, really loving this method. It just helps to give kind of a rustic, more vintage vibe to your paper crafts, but I'm also gonna use it for some other projects coming up, so stay tuned on that. You just gently rub the edges and all of a sudden it looks like you've dipped this in tea and given it a nice vintage photo look. How cute is that? I can't wait to wrap this around my carrots and I'll show you in a moment what it looks like on display. I'm also going to be sharing a full Eastercraft video where I show you how I'm decorating my tiered tray and my little sideboard in the kitchen with crafts like this and a few other budget friendly items. So stay tuned for that. I will be posting that video right here and I hope to see you back next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and thanks again for watching.